up for the better. Like there's, there's, you know, the, you know those little spit and sawdust venues that 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 bands played in when you were younger. That like, I don't know about you, but I romanticize about that stuff, and they're they're my favorite times as a teenager. Like going to see bands in little venues that that are sweaty little venues. And yeah, what was that place in Brighton? It's like on the water, and it's kind of like I saw Passion Pit there when I was like. I mean, 14 years ago, 12 years ago. It's like on the yeah. beach, but it's like a warehouse kind of like. Oh, yeah, that's the Concord too. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, yeah. that place. Yeah, that's still there, but there's a lot of places that are not there anymore, you know. Sad. And like, yeah, it is sad, yeah, because it, it feels like it's being sanitised, like, mm. and, and not only Brighton, but like London as well. And it feels like at some point there's going to be no venues for those bands to play. Mm. And how do you, how do you cut your teeth on a live circuit if it's if it's only like okay you play in a pub or you play a two thousand capacity venue yeah <laughs> there's, there's no there's nowhere in between do you know what I mean yeah do you have your own memories of those early days when you know you were still establishing yourself and you know sometimes no one rocked up or you know you stuffed up a gig like do you remember them fondly yeah. Kind of. Yeah, some of them were terrible. I remember, <laughs> I, remember, I, remember, I remember playing like one of my first gigs in a pub in Brighton and it was just me, the sound engineer, the barman and my girlfriend. <laughs> that was just, that was it at the time. So I'm still going to play the gig, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, what- but then, then, then there are other really cool ones where it was like a little, a little hip hop gig or whatever we used to play in, in the Concord in Brighton, you know, and being paid in like pretty much just beer and rum, you know, like no money, <laughs> but, but it's still cool. That's cool. Those are the great memories. And I think you made a really good point. The world will, that's a big loss to lose those, those kind of little venues where your feet stick to the ground and sure. you know, it's a bit dirty because they're the best memories I have of music yeah. you know even more so than the big o2 arenas is those little gigs where you discover someone and go shit you know yeah. that felt special you know yeah. and then seeing a band like later on playing those big venues and remembering that you saw him in that little tiny venue you know yeah do you remember seeing a, a band or an artist before they were big yeah I, I 2003 i went to see kings of leon Whoa! In, at, at that venue, the Concord, in front in front of like five hundred people, when they were still on their, I think it was Youth and Young Manhood tour, and like nobody really like there were a few people, but they were fairly unknown. It was a proper rock and roll show as well, like yeah. not like the Kings of Leon you see now. Like it was it was <laughs> it was mad good. It was they so weren't good. rocking up in separate Range Rovers to the gig. They were all nah. in one tour bus sleeping in one hotel room that's so sick um well I'm so happy to have you back and to have new music from me you know I've always been a fan of you since you know we, we kind of discovered you in Australia and I've just yeah. read about you, you're collaborating with a someone that's not Australian but has the record for most amount of tickets no shows ever done in one tour and that is Pink who Australia yeah. like I don't know if you know this but Australia is like so horny for Pink it's not even funny yeah, I kind of know that because um, my my guitar tech on my tour used to be hers for her band, and he and he was like, I remember him saying how many dates they did in Oz, <laughs> and I was like, what? That's crazy. Who, who does think, that amount of shows? It, I think it was like twenty seven stadium shows. Yeah, yeah, that's like cr- a million tickets. Like one in every twenty Australians went to the gig, like the show. I went. <laughs> he was like. And it's so cool that you're, that you're kind of, that you're teaming up. Is this, this is happening, right? I haven't like misread an yeah. article or something. Oh yeah, it's, it's happening, yeah. I, I met her in, back in about 2017 in Paris. Um, we were playing some big radio show thing together and met. And she was really nice and gracious towards me and, and told me she liked my music. And, I never actually intended to have any collaborations mm. on this record, um, but uh, we would just listen to the song one day, and, and someone said, "Oh, would you would you have any collaborations, or would you consider sort of making any of the songs uh, sort of features in in the future?" And I was like, "Yeah, 
let's send her the song. <laughs> so I sent, her, I sent her the song and she was like, yes, dope, I want to do it. That's awesome. Do you ever send an artist a song and they like never reply or they say yeah, no? Because that's how that awkward. Oh yeah, I, I sent Pink a, another song about a year, a year and a half before that, and I just, <laughs> I, got, I, I got nothing but air. <laughs> but you went back for more, which I respect. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. You, you knew this song was good, and um, yeah. I saw, I think it was on your, maybe I don't know if I watched an interview or so on Insta, but one of the songs on the album was written drunk, and you said that this is rare for you to actually write a song that's good. Yeah, when drunk, I've I mean. Written- I've written a, <laughs> I've written a lot of songs drunk that are terrible, <laughs> and, but thought like thought they were good at the time, and then yeah. woke up. And, nah, what is that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I did. And it, was, it, come out, it come out pretty good. It's like when I get I haven't been drunk in a while because the hangovers are too bad because I'm in my thirties now and it's not worth it. But I remember yeah. to have like life changing ideas, and I'd be like, yeah, and do a voice memo, you know, and the next day yeah. I listen to it and go. What? Like that was never. That, you're an idiot, Ash. And I thought I was going to be a millionaire, but it was never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And you're going back on tour. You must be beside yourself with excitement to get back out there and sing for real life people again. I feel like it might be speculative, but I'm keeping all my fingers and toes. Come crossed. on, that's the you know, spirit. Like, yeah, you got to be try to be positive about it. Yeah. Like there's some shows in like June and July where I'm like, eh. <laughs> uh, but then equally, there's there's loads coming up in like uh, August and September, and then the tour starts in like September October. So as long as the tour happens, I'm good. We can do it. I believe in humanity. This is yeah, the yeah. last year of this shit, and then we're gonna. I believe. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for putting out um, music in amongst all of this. I think for many people, I think it's what's gotten them through. So we need people like you to keep doing your thing and keep putting goodness out into the world. So Rag and Bone Man, Rory, thanks for being a legend. Australia loves <laughs> you and we can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, mate.